So, all right, hit it. I attended graduate school here at MSU for physics, and this is where my interest in photography began. What do you do as a wannabe physicist with a camera? You take long exposures of a laser pointer on a pendulum. <laughs> After seeing a postcard of the Milky Way over Glacier National Park that had all these fake weird star spikes on it, I thought, I can do better than that, and that is where my journey into night photography began. As I took more and more photos of the night sky, I began to appreciate night photography not only for the pretty photos, but for the door it opened to a whole new world to explore, and I wanted to share that world with others. During this time, I was the Space Public Outreach Team Manager for Montana Space Grant, and I was traveling all around the state, giving presentations at Montana schools. These presentations were a wonderful opportunity to incorporate my photography into our discussions of the night sky, and they inspired some amazing questions from the students, such as, how many times have I been to space? Turns out zero is a bit disappointing, but they had very deep questions, like, what is a black hole? And what does our galaxy look like? And this, I thought, was an amazing question. What does our galaxy look like? Have you ever seen this on a t-shirt or a poster? While it's philosophically cute, it's completely wrong. We don't have an image of what our galaxy looks like from the outside. Now, I would expect most people are familiar with what a galaxy looks like from the outside. For example, these are two of our galactic neighbors, the Andromeda and Triangulum galaxies. Here, the moons represent their angular size in our night sky, but these were taken here on Earth within our own Milky Way galaxy from the outside. So the question, what does our galaxy look like, ended up, as my lovely wife can attest, becoming an obsession of mine, searching for new ways to explore our Earth-bound connection with our Milky Way using my love of photography. So how do you start this search? I had a camera, I had a lens, and I started by driving up to highlight, fumbling with my camera clumsily in the dark, and as I became better acquainted with photographing the night skies, I started probing Google Maps, looking for interesting foregrounds which would match up perfectly with the orientation of the Milky Way for a given night and for a given season. I was trying to create a vision for that location. Now I only had to go out and make that vision a reality. And here comes the fun part. Interesting locations are found off the beaten path, and hiking in the dark is rather nerve-wracking. But when clear, clear skies prevailed, I ventured out into the darkness, guided only by a flashlight, where everything put your hair, on, your hair on end. Glowing eyes peer back at you from afar, as if wondering what sort of obnoxious creature would be stumbling through the night, while I, on the other hand, just hope that those are not the eyes of a grizzly bear. But I make it. Now it's time to make that vision a reality and point this camera towards the heavens. And after hours and hours, and sometimes days, of processing at home, this new world begins to unfold. And this, this is what I love about night photography of our skies. While our eyes are limited to the amount of light they can collect and process, cameras are not. And by combining landscape photography with astrophotography techniques, our skies become alive and reveal the night like never before. And the best part is, you never know what you might capture and what you can learn from it. Why is it that you can see the faint outline of an outstretched hand on the darkest night? Well, it turns out, night isn't so dark after all. Our nights are blaze with a phenomenon known as air glow, captured here in a brilliant green, gently waving across the sky. On a given night, we can see around 3,000 stars with our unaided eyes, and we use these to create the constellations we're familiar with. Here, we find within the constellation Sagittarius the asterism known as the teapot. Off the spout of the teapot, the Milky Way steams out. And what does the teapot pour into? The center of our Milky Way galaxy. Here, some 25,000 light years away, lies our supermassive black hole, hidden behind a veil of dust and gas and stars, which we're all orbiting as we speak. Just above sits the Lagoon Nebula, a stellar nursery giving birth to new stars and energizing the surrounding hydrogen gas and it glows so brightly, you can see it with your unaided eye on a dark night. Moving up from the core of our Milky Way, we find another treasure trove of celestial objects. Here lies the constellation Cygnus, the swan, with the bright blue star Deneb, a massive, supergiant star, some 200 times the size of our sun, and shining almost 200,000 times as bright. Just below Deneb lies the North American Nebula, a mass of hydrogen of more than 4,000 suns. And below that sits the Veil Nebula, 
a supernova remnant of a former massive star which ended its life in a giant explosion. And Deneb will one day meet the same fate. Our, our night skies are filled with glowing gems, from nebulae to star clusters to globular clusters to even galaxies. Does anyone recognize that blob on the left-hand side? That's our You Are Here galaxy, plastered on posters and t-shirts. Sitting at a whopping 2.5 million light years away, the Andromeda galaxy is the furthest object you can see with your naked eye. Now, the goal of my photography is not only to share the wonders of our night sky with people, but also inspire others to spend time under the stars. While many of these photos were taken with moderately expensive gear, physics doesn't pay all that well, it is accessible to anyone with a desire to get out there, from a pair of binoculars to even smartphones being able to capture our nightly wonders. There's so many ways to appreciate our night skies, even if it's just going out, sitting under the stars, and seeing what unfolds, as was this surprise visit by Steve, the aurora not aurora phenomenon. Oh, and if you haven't seen the aurora from Montana, you need to go out there and see it. Keep an eye out for solar activity and aurora forecasts. They say there's an app for everything, and there is. There's an app for this. The aurora pops up more often than you might think, and especially as we head into our long winter nights. All in all, our night skies are anything but dark, and with a few tools and the drive, you too can begin to explore our night skies here in big sky country. But for tonight, I hope I've given you just the slightest bit of appreciation for what our home, the Milky Way galaxy, looks like from the inside out. Thank you. <laughs>